Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here. So before I begin talking about today's game review, I want to take you all back to the past for a sec. So I'm sure that most people that grew up playing on a PS1 has at least played on a PS1 demo disc before. There was quite a lot of them out there, and the one thing that I always remember about some of these demo discs is not only for the fact that they had a big variety of games on them, but they also had some pretty cool menu designs and even some nice sounding music. But the one demo disc that I'll always remember from way back in the day was PlayStation Magazine Volume 14, and it was of November of 1998. So some of the games that were on there were games like Medieval, which is an awesome game that really does not need an introductory, Future Cop LAPD, which is a great game done by EA if you could believe it, and even G Darius, which by the way, that was actually the very first shoot 'em up that I've ever played. Yeah, what a great way to start. Well, there was one other game I used to play a lot on that very demo disc, but unfortunately, I don't have the disc anymore, and I remember, like, after losing the disc and I didn't have any internet for a really long ass time, I forgot what the name of the game was, and I only remembered it only for a very few things, and it took years to finally remember what the game was, and well, that's the game I'm going to be talking about today, and that happens to be Dragon Seeds. So Dragon Seeds was released in Japan and North America in 1998, and it was developed and published by Jellico. Although I've also heard the name being pronounced as Jellico, but as for their company opening, I've always thought it said Jellico, and that's just what I always used to call it. Jellico. Well, however it's said, it's also the company that published the Vampire Hunter D game on PS1. So the game Dragon Seeds is considered as a strategy mixed with a uh, pet simulator game, if you can even call it that. The closest thing I can really compare this game to would be like the Monster Rancher games and the first Digimon World game. So you know that this one is gonna be an oddball one. So as always, let's first start talking about the story. So this game takes place in the Sela period in the year 180. So it basically starts out telling off a bunch of global warming crap, but throughout that entire shitstorm, a bunch of scientists end up discovering a 90 million year old creature which just happens to be a dragon. So many years later, after the discovery, they end up finding out that it can actually be cloned, and therefore a new world order has been made. Where there is a lot of people known as dragon seekers, where they have to raise dragons and fight with other people, you know, kinda like Pokemon. So here comes the main protagonist, who by the way, you can name whatever the hell you want, and of course, I just happen to name him Assy, because, you know, we gotta continue the chronicles of Assy. So Assy moves into this town so he can become a Dragon Seeker Master or some shit. So after moving in and end up getting a dragon, which is all done for you, you end up bumping into a guy that does not look very evil, and he happens to be named Count Awazanka, or... Something along those lines. Well, this guy may seem really nice at first, he's like, Oh, I'm gonna help you train your dragon. Not like the movie, but like this. So you got a baby dragon going up against a big badass dragon, and well, guess who wins here? Yeah, this is one of those battles that you have to lose on purpose. Because it just teaches you the very basics, and of course, after you lose, he ends up like laughing at you because he's a total dickhole. And that's where Assy's journey fully begins. So now the big point of the game is that you now have to create a new dragon where you gotta raise that one the best that you can so that now that you can take on a Count Awazanka and kick his ass. But you can't just do this right away, you gotta earn your respect by going to the, uh, the tournaments where you gotta like win every single match. So that sums up the story on this one, so now let's start talking about the gameplay which I have a feeling we might be here for a while. So here's the main hub world of the game, is that you got a map and you gotta select wherever you want to go. And once you go to these locations, time will pass, and once it reaches uh, night time, then you have to go back and rest, and then you get to start a new day. But let's focus at one location at a time. So first one we're gonna talk about here is the cloning lab. So this is where you get to create your own dragon, which is, by the way, absolutely free. So to create your own dragon, you have many different options to pick from. You got a Saurian, you got a Winged, then you got Beetle, you got Wasp, then you got Natural, and then of course there is uh, the one for Crab, which I can't pronounce that fucking name. And then there's two other ones you get to unlock later on, which are Spirit and Evil. I guess you could say that could be Dr. Evil's recommended choice. 
So after picking the type that you want, you also have available words to choose from. Yeah, you have to combine two words together to make a phrase, therefore it could alter some of the attributes whenever your dragon is created. Let's go through some of them because they are kind of amusing. So on the left hand side you have the past, the egg, the future, the battle, the end, the power, the wind, the fire, the ice, the thunder, Armageddon, life, Apollo, not Apollo Creed mind you, time, and then there's can you smell what the rock is cooking? And finally, there's the name of the company of this game, Jellico. Yes, I guess they really had to pull a shameless plug. So then on the right hand side, you got is shining, is alive, is rising, is turning, is burning, is frozen, is defiant, is eternal, is passion, is dreaming, is crying, is breathing, is near, is continued, is beautiful, and then finally there's is fucking broken! So yeah, combining some of these together, I've made some pretty funny-ass results, but either way, you can mess around that on your own time. So after picking the different phrases, then you have to go to the nursery, and the guy will tell you that you have to wait a full 24 hours until the baby is born. So then you have to go back and rest until the next day, and then you get to pick up your baby dragon. Or maybe your giant bug, who knows. But one thing that is important to know is that you can only have one dragon out at a time, so therefore you have to go to the, the bio bank where you could store a dragon and then you can take out another one if you really feel like it. And it's important to know that if you do store a dragon into the bio bank, it does not age when it's being stored. But I'll explain that more in a little bit. So that takes care of the cloning labs, then of course there is your home where you can rest, you can save your game, and you get to look at the collectibles that you have, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the regular ass shop where you get to, you know, buy your equipment, like your, uh, your swords and your reflectors, and of course they have different categories, like small, medium, and large, which you can only equip those to the appropriate dragon state. But aside from the regular ass shop, you also do get the junk shop. So what the junk shop is, is that you can get some various items, like one that can gain your maximum health for your dragon, or the maximum amount that you can use your special attacks and whatnot, and of course there is special weapons that you can get from him as well. But the old guy that owns the junk shop is a crusty asshole. So after that, there is the training grounds, where basically you get to gain additional uh, points for your dragons. But in order to gain these abilities, you gotta do three different minigames that gain each stat. So there's one for strength, one for uh, special attack, and then there's one for uh, all around everything, like speed, special attack, and strength. But that one is a mirror match where you gotta fight your own dragon with the hologram. So the one that gains your strength, you gotta clear out all the candles blindfolded, but basically you gotta hit the candles at the right time. And of course you get to select from uh, 5 seconds to 9 seconds. And to be quite honest, this minigame is sometimes kinda bullshit. But the one that gains special attack isn't so bad, because all you gotta do is that you gotta select the right tile that you have to select, which will then get randomly shuffled, and you gotta select it where it is. And this one I find is easy to get used to. And when it comes to all three of these trials, the better at them you do, then the more stats you gain out of it. So the next area we're gonna take a look at is Pablo's. So this is a bar where you get to fight other people's dragons, but when you fight them though, you have to bet money on it. And if you win, the money that you get will be doubled. So essentially, Pablo's bar is underground cockfighting. So the next area in the game is the memory forest, where basically this is where you get to let your dragons go once they get way too old. And the guy there will also give you some random hints and advice on general stuff about the game. Also, there's actually one other thing that the memory force is used for, but unfortunately, it's very rare for it to happen. And that is apparently you can battle wild dragons when you're in that spot at the right time, and once you beat a wild dragon, you can actually capture it. But unfortunately, from what I've looked up, is that you can't use the captured dragon. So the dragons that you capture there can apparently be traded in for money or other rare objects. Yeah, out of my playthrough of this entire game, I was never able to experience this. That's how rare it was. And now, as for the final area of the game that you can go to, is the battle arena, which essentially is the main scenario of the game. 
So you gotta make your way from the bottom all the way to the top by kicking as much other dragon's asses out there. And it goes from rank E all the way to rank A, and there are three different categories. There's the baby, then there's the intermediate, then there's the adult area, and then finally there is the, uh, the final area, which I guess you can say is like the Elite Four. And of course that cock hole that destroyed your first dragon is a part of that. So that takes care of all of the different areas you get to go to and what they all do. So now let's talk a little bit about the dragons themselves. So, like I said before, your dragons do age in this game. And once your dragon reaches a certain age, it will turn into a cocoon. And then once you have a cocoon, you can't do anything until it hatches. And then once it hatches, it goes to the next stage where it gets to become like a much older dragon. So with that, you'll be able to buy the bigger equipment for your dragon. But one thing that does make this game pretty simplistic and compared to something like Monster Rancher is that you don't need to worry about so much things like getting hungry or getting tired. But instead, you just gotta do a little bit of time management within this game. But not to worry, you don't have to worry about a giant moon with an evil face crashing into the earth. Don't worry, that's not gonna happen in this game. But you just gotta keep track of the locations that you're going to and what time of day it is. So now, finally, we get to talk about the battles within this game. So it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, and this is where you have two different action points to choose from. So the options that you have are move forward, move backwards, using your shield, using your projectile weapon, which is your special attack, and then there's using your melee attack, and then of course there is uh, taunting. So the way that it works is that it's turn-based, and it's all being done at the same time, kind of like rock, paper, scissors. So you really have to strategize within this game, you can't just like select like attack over and over again and expect to get shit done. No, it ain't gonna work like that at all. And one other thing I gotta add to the battles here is that these battles really took me a lot of time to get used to. Because if this is your first time playing through the game, then you're gonna have to go through some trial and error. And one of the big reasons why I think you're gonna have to go through some trial and error is that this game kinda has a roguelike element to it, and that is that if you die with a dragon in this game, he's gone for good. Although, there is one way that you can bring your dragon back, and that is that if you ever put him into a cell before, you can actually use the remaining some DNA that was left in there, and then you get to create a new one. And oh yeah, speaking of the DNA, that reminds me, there's actually a really cool thing you can do to get special dragons. And to get some of these special dragons, you gotta have another memory card in slot 2, and it has to have certain games on that memory card. There's a big list of them that I'll show right here. So if you have any of these games on your memory card slot 2, then you can get a pretty cool dragon that you can't get anywhere else. That's another thing that's similar to Monster Rancher, where in that game you can actually put in a disc of another game to create a, another monster. You know, maybe someday I might have to do a review on Monster Rancher, but anyways, back to Dragon Seed. So I think that covers the basics of what you need to know about this game, where pretty much you gotta take care of a dragon, train it, and make sure it doesn't die. And the fighting in the game has a lot of strategies to it that you just can't be an idiot with. So let's get moving on to the controls, and well, there's not a whole lot I can say about the controls since, you know, you're just moving around selecting things, so, you know, there's no input lag or anything like that you gotta worry about. So I guess I can really talk about the button layout for the game, so whenever you're in a battle, pressing up on the D-pad makes you go forward, pressing down on the D-pad makes you go backwards. Square is the shield, X is the uh, the special attack, and circle is the melee attack. And finally, taunting is used with L1 and R1. And of course, you can pause the game with the start button, which allows you to surrender. Yeah. So, pretty easy to understand, but of course, you can't go button mashing in this game. So, anyways, now let's get moving on to the other things, like the graphics. And I remember back then when I first played this game on that demo disc, I thought this game looked amazing at the time. Although now looking at it, you know, it still looks pretty good looking for PS1. Like I find the game has a lot of nice bright colors and I also find that a lot of the backgrounds look really nice with the 2D-ness of it. And even the backgrounds of the locations that you can visit also look pretty cool looking as well. It kind of makes me like really like wanting to live in this world. But as for the overall design of like the characters and like the dragons and such, some of them are pretty cool looking and there are some characters that are also kind of interesting looking. But then there's a lot of other weird looking shit within this game. So yes, there's a lot of dragons within this game that really don't look like dragons at all. Like I said, there are some insects in this game and then there's some like rock monsters. It's 
Kind of weird why you'd consider that a dragon, but hey, whatever. But probably the most weirdest design within this game are the evil dragons. Yes, now normally you'd be thinking like the evil dragons would be something like really badass looking, or if you want to be ridiculous about it, it could have been a bunch of sharks with laser beams attached to their heads. Well, it comes to a disappointment that none of those things are really it, and that the evil dragons are doors. Like, who the fuck came up with this idea? Now, the only explanation on why they call a door dragon an evil dragon is that maybe it was originally intended to be called the Jim Morrison dragon because, you know, Jim Morrison was from the doors and, you know, it's a door, haha. <laughs> But they couldn't do it due to copyright infringement, so they instead they called it an evil dragon just to troll everyone to thinking they're gonna make something really badass, but instead it becomes a fucking door. Yeah, gotta love it. Now one other thing that is also kind of weird with this game is that it has to do with the characters, and whenever they talk, they have some really weird lip movement. Now, this is not something I just came up with because after looking at the game in this day and age, this is actually one of the very few things I remember seeing as a kid, and I thought, Wow, what was that game where the dragons and it also had like that weird lip movement going on? So even back then, I still thought it just looked really weird and awkward. And just for how weird it looks, it looks like you can just dub in anything into it and it will work. I'm Squidward, I'm Squidward, I'm Squiddy, Squiddy, Squidward. Patrick, I do not sound like that. I'm Squidward, I'm Squidward, oh fuck you. Mrah, 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 mrah. Drinking semen every day is indeed good for you. Yep, that sums up me and my stupidity. So now, yeah, overall for the graphics, I do think this is a pretty good looking game for 1998. You know, with the bright colors, the cool designs, well, some of them for the most part, and of course the nice backgrounds. But before we move on, one thing I do want to mention just for shits and giggles is that I remember when I first played this game on that demo disc, the first thing that came to my mind was, wow, it almost feels like I'm playing the movie Flight of the Dragons on my PlayStation. Well, damn, the member berries on this video are real. So now, let's get moving on and start talking about the music, and all I gotta say is that the music in this game is absolutely fucking great. That was one of the other things that I remembered about this game back then, was that I remember the music in it being really freaking good. So I find that a lot of the music in this game fits with the tone of the game, fits with the settings, and I also like the fact that this game has a lot of uh, really relaxing songs, which is very nice. And on top of that, some of the battle music is pretty great, although some of them are kind of weird sounding, but you know, it's definitely not bad. But probably my favorite battle theme within the game would have to go to the Pablo uh, battles because that one just has a really awesome kick-ass guitar solo. But my favorite song throughout the entire game in general, in fact this is a song I actually talked about in one of my top 10 list videos, happens to be the Cloning Lab theme. I mean that piece is just so fucking amazing sounding, I don't know, I, I can just gush about that song all day long, but either way, it's amazing. So yes, I can easily say that the music in this game is hands down the best part about it. It's just really great stuff. And I find it to be a very underrated OST that doesn't really get talked about much, though I guess that's probably because the game is also pretty obscure, but either way, if you're watching this and you are curious to know some of the music in this game, I can highly recommend listening to it. So now, if you want to go out and buy this game, as of right now, the prices on this game are kind of all over the place and it's kind of hard to pinpoint it down. So for some examples, I'm seeing some loose discs going for about like $15. And then there's some for 20, some for 25. There's even another loose disc that's being sold for $45, and stupidly enough, it doesn't even have a freaking picture. You know, that's one pet peeve of mine on eBay is that whenever you're looking for like games and such, and then you find like some of them that just have like a picture of the cover on it, and that's it, and it's like, really? You don't have like a picture of it? I mean, is it really that fucking hard to take a picture of a game, especially in this day and age where everyone has a freaking cell phone with a freaking camera on it? But just like the loose copies, even the complete copies are also all over the place, where there are some selling for $45, some selling for $40, some selling for uh, $35 and there's some for 50 and then of course there's a sealed copy going for 250 so yeah this one it just seems like people just can't make up their fucking minds 
but the Japanese copies are significantly much cheaper. But of course, you gotta have a Japanese PS1 or a way to play them, and also a way to read the language, because I'm pretty sure it's not in English. But either way, I don't really consider this to be a super rare game or anything like that, but it is one that I don't see around too often. In fact, I've only seen it like once. And that one time when I seen it was when I fully remembered everything about the game when I was a kid. But that one time when I did see it, I ended up not buying it because I think it was like really bad shape and it was also costing a little bit too much more than I'd like to, so yeah, I didn't want to risk it. So now, moving right along, is that for my overall thoughts on this game is that this is a game where I had a lot of mixed feelings when I was just getting back into this one as an adult. So a part of that has to do with the fact that this game is not beginner friendly whatsoever. Because if you're going to be playing this game blind or not knowing a whole lot about it, then you're probably going to die a lot or you're just going to rage quit because honestly this game had me rage quit a few times when I first played this game. But after looking into a couple things about this game being walkthroughs and I had to get some pro tips from the pros of this game, well, I definitely did not rage quit as much after figuring out some good tips on the game, but it did take a lot of time and patience because, man, this game, it definitely, you, you can't fuck around with this game. But I'd say that the beginning part is easily the most rough part that you have to go through. But once I found out some really good strategies to use in battle, and of course finding some good ways to earn money a little bit quicker, then I actually found out that this game is actually pretty decent and I did end up kinda liking it. But with that said though, I can easily say that this game is not gonna be for everyone. So as I said, the getting started with this game is really tough and it's also not beginner friendly. And it also takes a lot of time and patience to get used to this game's tactics. Not only when it comes to the battles, but also even when it comes to training your dragons. And one other reason that I can see other people getting turned off by this game is that one roguelike element where if your dragon dies, he's gone for good. Also, the game's story really isn't anything that special, but either way though, I still did kinda like this game as I was playing through it more. But it did take me quite a few tries to finally get past that beginning part, and once I grooved into it, I was starting to get used to it, and then I was starting to say, you know what, this is actually kind of fun. But even with that, I still wouldn't say that this is a great game, I would at least say that it's decent at best. But I will say, it is a pretty impressive game for PS1, because there really isn't much other games like this. Like I said, the only other thing I can think of is uh, Monster Rancher and the first Digimon World game. And even with that, it's still not a whole lot like it, it just has a few like things that remind me of it. So with that said, it is at least a pretty unique experience that you can play on your PS1. And as for recommending it, well, like I said, it's kind of hard to recommend this one because there's a lot of things about it that can be very frustrating for many players. But if this game looks interesting to you, or if you want to have a pretty decent challenge, then at least give this game a try on your emulation devices. Because I would kind of feel bad if someone went out and bought this game and paid like a pretty uh, hefty price for it and ended up like not liking it. Since I can totally understand why people would not like this game, but as I said for myself, I did end up kind of enjoying it as I went further within the game. And thankfully, the game's graphics are really nice looking for PS1 standards, and the music is hands down like the best, like, just-tastic shit I've ever heard. Okay, that's a little bit of an overstatement, but personally, I found that the music in this game was just really damn good. So that sums up my thoughts on the game Dragon Seeds, where it's a really weird pet simulator game, if you can even call it that, where you gotta raise your dragon and you gotta train your dragon, much like in the movie, and you gotta make sure that you don't die and get good. So that'll be the end of this review, so thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.